Hello everyone, and welcome back to my channel. For this next mobile game series, we will be making a downhill ski game where you can dodge obstacles, collect coins, and blow up yetis. In this video, we will be downloading Godot and setting up our project for Android development. Here's a clip of the finished game that we will make in this series, so stick around if you're interested. This series will cover a basic version of this game, with an additional refactor following the first version. The reason being is that I want to introduce different methods for making mobile games that might suit different projects. The first version of this game will be perfect for those new to game dev, as it won't go over any overly complex topics or game design methods. However, there will still be much to learn. I hope you enjoy the series. Okay, so let's head over to GodotEngine.org to download the latest version of Godot, which at the time will be 4.3. Make sure to put the downloaded files into a highly accessible folder. I like to put Godot app files into a folder called Godot Engine inside of my documents folder. Next, we should create a folder that will hold all of our Godot projects. Let's create one called Godot Projects. I will put this folder and the Godot Engine folder inside of another folder called Godot. Now we are ready to start setting up our project in Godot. Let's navigate to our Godot engine folder and start up the engine. Once in the Godot project manager, we will have to choose a folder where we will create our project folder. Click on the plus create button located in the top left corner, then select browse to navigate to the Godot projects folder and click on the select current folder button. We will now name our project folder. I will call mine Super Ski Bomber Tutorial. Let's select the mobile renderer for our game and then go ahead and click on the Create and Edit button to create our Godot project. We will now set up our project settings, starting with our viewport. Navigate to Project, Project Settings, and then to Display Window. Under Size, set Viewport Width to 180. Set Viewport Height to 320. Set Mode to Windowed. Under Stretch, set Mode to Viewport. Set Aspect to Keep. Under Handheld, set Orientation to Portrait. Next, navigate to Rendering, Textures. Under Canvas Textures, set Default Texture Filter to Nearest. This will allow us to import our 2D sprites without them appearing blurry. Now let's navigate to Rendering Environment. Under Defaults, set Default Clear Color to EEF8FE in the Hexed Value property. This will change the background color of our game. Next, in the Filter Settings bar, type in Input. Then navigate to Input Devices Pointing. Set both Emulate Touch from Mouse and Emulate Mouse from Touch to True. This will allow us to test the game's touch controls on the computer as well as on a mobile device. Again, in the Filter Settings bar, type in Import. Then navigate to Rendering, Textures. Under VRAM Compression, set Import ETC2 ASTC to True and restart the editor. This setting is necessary to be able to export to Android. Finally, we will exit the project settings and navigate to Editor, Manage Export Templates, and select the Download and Install button. Go ahead and restart the editor as well. If you don't have it already, you'll have to download Android Studio. Link is in the description. Once you've done so, go through the setup for Android Studio. Once you've reached the screen, you're done. The last piece of software we will need for Android game development is the JDK or Java Development Kit. Follow the link in the description to get the license-free version of JDK 21. Make sure to download the Windows version to follow with this tutorial. Before we get started with setting everything up, we are going to create a helper file that will hold important paths and info that will be needed later for the Android export setup. On your desktop, create a new text file called helper.txt. Open it up and write 
JDK path. And on the next line, write Android SDK path. And finally, on the next line, write key store generation command. To populate the helper file, first we will get the path to our Java JDK. For this one, open up File Explorer and navigate to the C drive, then Program Files, and then Java 21, JDK 21. Once inside of the JDK 21 folder, copy the path in your File Explorer address bar. Open the helper file and paste that path below the JDK path line. Next, we will get the path to our Android SDK. To do so, press the Windows key and type in percent app data percent with no spaces and then hit enter. Hit the up to button. Once inside the app data local folder, look for the Android folder and then navigate to the SDK folder. Once inside of the SDK folder, copy the path. Open the helper file and paste that path below the Android SDK path line. The key store generation command will be in the description for this video, so simply copy it from there and paste it below the key store generation command line in the helper file. Now that our helper file is ready, we can begin setting up the Android export settings in Godot. Back in Godot, navigate to Editor, Editor Settings, and type Export into the Filter Settings bar. Navigate to Export, Android. Under Java SDK Path, paste the Java JDK Path from the helper file. Under Android SDK Path, paste the Android Path from the helper file. Open up a command prompt by typing CMD into a Windows search and select Run as Administrator. We will first change directories to where our Java Development Kit binaries are. To do so, type CD plus space, then paste the Java JDK path, and then add forward slash bin to the end of it and hit enter. Open the helper file and copy the key store generation command, then paste it into CMD and hit enter. I have already done this step, which is why I get this error but here, no news is good news. Back in Godot, under the Debug Key Store field, click on the Browse icon to the right of the field and navigate to the bin folder and then select the debug.keystore file. Under one-click deployment, clear previous install, set it to true. Next, navigate to Project, Export. To the right of the Presets option, click on the Add button and select Android. In the Options tab, scroll down to Package. Under Unique Name, type in your developer name in this format, com.yourdevname.ssb. Under Name, type Super Ski Bomber. This will be the name that shows up on your phone. Under Signed, make sure it's set to true. Now we can export our project as an APK. To make sure everything is working, Let's export it to our Godot folder. Great. So as you can see, we have two export files here in the Godot folder. We can now set things up for one-click deployment. In order to test one-click deployment, we will create a simple test scene to make sure the project is exporting properly to our phones. Create a new scene called Test and add a color rect to the scene. Change the color to a color of your liking. In order to be able to test our game on a phone, we will need to turn on the developer options. To do so, follow these steps. Go to Settings, select About Phone, then select Software Information. Go to the section called Build Number and tap it repeatedly until you receive a notification that says the developer options have been enabled. Go back to Settings and scroll to the bottom and select Developer Options. Scroll down to USB Debugging and turn it on. At this point, you need to have your phone plugged into your computer. Make sure that it is unlocked and that you have cleared any permissions necessary to access files on your device. If everything is set up correctly for one-click deployment, we should see a play button directly to the right of the stop button that is no longer grayed out. 
Click on that icon, select your device, and the project will be exported to your phone. Fantastic. Now we have our project set up for Android export and one-click deployment. This will allow us to test the game in the editor as well as on our phones. In the following video, we will create our project structure and import some assets for the game.